Chairman, this is a conditional use request by Yasmin Salcedo um, for an event center and highway commercial zoning. The property is part of a commercial center, but located at 2161 Bemis Road. This is on the south side of the road, um, excuse me, the east side of the road, south of Langdale Drive. Um, zoning map shows a private commercial. Character area shows community activity center throughout this area. Um, aerial image shows that this um, shopping center is a smaller appendage, um, but separate from the Castle Park Shopping Center, which is the property to the south. Um, this is two parcels. The one parcel that includes the subject property is outlined in yellow. But more specifically, you see the white and yellow dot in the lower right-hand corner of it. That is part of the L-shaped wing of the building. Uh, that is the part of the building, that ten uh, tenant space of about 4,000 square feet is what we're looking at. To put in the reference, uh, there's been a long history of a nightclub here over the years, a much larger facility. That is in the larger tenant space to the upper left of this, um, about four times the size. We're not talking about the large club, we're talking about the smaller space uh, that's all the way at the end of the building and the south end of the L shape. Um, proposed floor sketch is in your packet. The letter of intent from the applicant is there. Um, she is describing a more of a daytime evening type of facility that is smaller for family type gatherings. Um, the letter is pretty self-explanatory. The floor area, this is a sketch. It is a little bit deceiving in terms of the scale. Like I said, it's closer to about 4,000 square feet. Um, I've added the dimensions to it on here. It's 40 feet deep and 81 feet wide, um, plus three in the back for the restrooms. Has a couple different exits to it. Um, one thing that's to note in the aerial is where the property is and is not. Um, if you look at the parking lot area that is between this larger building and the Castle Park Shopping Center to the south, you can see sort of an east-west line running through the middle of it. That is a property line. It used to have a fence that separates this property from the property of Castle Park. Um, years ago when the club was operating with much higher capacity, um, they had a shared parking agreement with the Castle Park owners. That um, shared parking agreement has been rescinded, so that is no longer in place. Um, so they cannot use that other half of that parking lot. Also, the lighter colored pavement to the east of the subject property is another parking lot that is also not part of this property. That also belongs to the Castle Park Shopping Center and it is currently not in use. And if you drive by this along Langdale Drive, you see that this has been gated closed, and the pavement has been removed. Um, I think there was a uh, George Military College or some education facility that was using the back side of the shopping center. They used this as their parking area years ago. So all that's available to this event center is the parking lot immediately in front of it as you go toward Bemis Road, and by that I mean the northern path. Um, that's all on the subject property, which they share with that whole shopping center. That's one of the issues that's been pointed out here at your staff report. If you look at some of the imagery, this is the subject property along the Bemis Road frontage looking north. Um, at the very west end of that commercial center, there's a church that operates there in that last storefront. And then looking eastward down the subject property's parking lot um, toward the actual subject tenant space, which is at the very back. It's that white wall that you see at the end. Zoomed in, here's a closer view of that part of the building. You see the two um, exit doors that face the parking lot, and then sort of a walkway around to the side, and there you see that parking lot in the back that is not on their property. Um, adjacent, this is the nearby portion of the Castle Park Shopping Center, southward view down Bemis Road, and then the eastward view down Langdale Drive, back toward that neighborhood. The subject building you see there on the right. This is another view of that building from the other end looking back toward Bemis Road, um, very much the back side of that building. And then this is that parking lot to the east where it's been gated off. And you see there's not uh, all pavement that's been cleared in the middle of it. And then the first house of the neighborhood as you go back into the neighborhood itself. Um, so in your package, of course, is the floor plan sketch. Um, and some other information about the property. Um, staff has found a request consistent with our comprehensive plan, consistent with the conditional use work, uh, review criteria, and recommending approval subject to six conditions. These 
are tailored after the last event similar that had come through a few months ago for a similar operation but much smaller. It was in the Garden Plaza on Ashley Street. So we started with those conditions um, to begin with and they just one modification. Um, but for to go through these and get them in the record, I'll read through them. Number one is approval shall be granted in the name of the applicant only for an indoor event center as described in the applicant's letter of intent with events taking place indoors only. Number two, hours of operation shall be limited to within the hours of 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. daily. That was one of the changes. I added an hour to it um, because there's residential uses are a little farther away than was the situation on Ashley, so we added an hour. Um, number three, total maximum facility occupancy shall be limited to no more than 160 persons. Number four, all events shall be private and scheduled in advance with attendance numbers predetermined and managed by the applicant. There shall be no open commercial ticket sales, entry cover charges, or other forms of open public admittance. All sounds generated by the facility shall be in strict adherence to the city's adopted building <coughs> noise ordinance. Number five, all food and beverage served on the premises shall be provided as part of the scheduled event or not sold and prepared by locally licensed caterers or by the private lessee of the facility as prearranged through the applicant. All alcoholic beverages shall be served by a licensed alcoholic beverage caterer in accordance with city ordinance. And then lastly, conditional use approval shall expire one year from the date of approval if no city business license has been obtained by that date. So just as with the previous event center, the same type of conditions that narrowly defines the scope of the event center. The applicant is here, um, but I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have for me. Thank you, Matt. Any questions for Matt, Commissioner? I have one. So how many, given that they don't have access to the light-colored parking lot and that it's designated for Castle Park, how many parking spots do they have? The parking lot on the subject property, on the part that they're able to use outright, is at least 85. So looking at 160. If you do two per vehicle, that's all 180 during the hours. Normally when we calculate a ratio of parking to people, it's three to one. So it leaves a little bit of a cushion. Um, the building is large enough to hold more than that, actually more than twice that, based on the floor space. Um, but that would be a lot uh, for limited parking. If the applicant were able at a future date to get shared parking agreement or use of this other adjacent property, and wanted to go above 160 and has a track record ahead of time, then that's something we could continue, uh, consider at a future conditional use here. So this gets them started, it complies with the scope of their letter of intent. And so it's a good starting point. Well, I know that was an issue with the one in the garden, was it Garden Plaza? Um, but that issue is that there were a number of other retail businesses that were sharing the same parking lot, which that doesn't seem to be an issue. Here. And a much smaller parking lot right. uh, like right. this one. Um, this one has room for more than 85, and that's what they have striped. Um, a creative engineer could fit some more in there, but 85 is a good round number. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Yes. Yeah. Um, is there not an issue with their beverage service and proximity to the church at the end of the plaza? The separation of property is only 50 feet, okay. and they're way beyond that. Um, the other main concern is you have the, the club facility next door that is, for all practical purposes, dormant at the time. Um, there was an issue a few years ago about a fire had broken out in the building. Now this end of the building is fully sprinkled, so it's no longer a big issue. Um, this is sort of the overflow space that once was a much larger facility. Um, so hopefully if with the other facility, which was primarily a nighttime operation, the hours of operation would be such it would not be a major conflict. Any other questions for staff? In that case, I will open the public hearing portion of this case. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak in favor of this case? So please come forward. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak in favor of this case? Yes, ma'am. Please come forward.
Paul would take your name and address. My name is Yasmin Salcido. Um, I have a question. Yes. Uh, I Thank you. Any questions for the speaker? Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else here this evening who would like to speak in favor of this case? Seeing no one, is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak against this case? If so, please come forward. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak against this case? <clears throat> Seeing no one, then that will close the public hearing portion of this case. Commissioners, any additional comments or questions? Now we'll call for a motion, please. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Rouncher. Uh, file number C 2024-05, I make a motion that we approve uh, in conjunction with staff's recommendation to include all, so all six special conditions. Okay, I'll second that. Thank you. We have a motion to recommend approval by Commissioner Rouncher and a second by Commissioner Bates. All those in favor of the motion to recommend approval? I believe that's unanimous motion. 